Hey, how are we doing? It's JJ. We are all pitched up. We are up the, the higher end of Loch Cluany. Cluny. I don't know how to say it. But anyway, Loch Cluany. It's actually a dam now. Pitched up with a uni gear. Space Dome 2 tent. Said pickup truck with canoe. James Reading. This is where we pitched up just off the road. With a mountain stream going down into the dam. Mountains, mountains. That's a private track disappearing off to an estate. So we haven't gone over that side. Look at the view from over there. And we have just seen about two, 300 meters away, there's a herd of red deer. A red deer running wild. Not in a country park, but running wild. So that's pretty awesome. So yeah, we decided to come back from Sky, head past the Carla Lockhouse. And I noted from groups and postings that that's the Cluani Inn. We had a bite to eat there. There's a couple of other people pitched up. They may disappear, but it's not a true massive wild camp into the wilds of beyond, but you know, we're on a road trip, we're going to find somewhere comfortable. Look at that for a backdrop. Pretty stunning. Pretty stunning. We are pitched. You can just make out the truck there, tents behind it. One other camper left. And that is part of the lock. Lock Cluany, although we don't know how to say it, so I might just start calling it the George Clooney Lock. I mean, I'm, I'm no uh, campfire chef or Gordon Bleu. Gordon Ramsay and that, but do you know what? In the pitch in the middle of nowhere, gas stove billowing away. Expedition food, so we get the bolognese truck. A little bit of drizzle going on, but if that carries on, we'll just go and sit in a truck. There is just have a bit of ambiance. Not too far over that way, there is a big male red stag bellowing out and I think he's making his way over this way to the other side of the bridge where the females are. So that would be interesting if he pops up along, but yeah. Simple, simple food, simple pleasures, can't ask for much more than that. White wine in a plastic cup. <laughs> White wine in a plastic sea to summit cup.
Completely unperturbed. Yeah. I'm videoing now. Yeah. yeah. Well, the camera, you know, he's been here quite a while, love. Oh, my days. That's a great video. Thank you. <coughs> Just in the deer whisperer I'm doing a video of. He's only been down here for about 40 minutes. I kind of need him to actually go. Because I really need a wee, and I don't need him getting hold of my scent. Go on, you big bugger. Bugger off! Go on. Morning, morning, morning. We survived. We survived. Now, if I've put a lot of the, the previous bits in, last night, <laughs> oh my days, we had a, uh, a male red deer, I'd probably say five to six years old, going by his teens, his antlers. He'd came down from up over there, over there, and we heard him. We were sat in a truck having a having a, a beer and a plastic beaker of wine. It was drizzling. There's no point in sitting in a tent when you've got a truck behind you. So, uh, yeah, I heard him up over there and then he spent an age coming down to just the other side, just here. And then we watched him set up in the truck and he'd come along the bridgeway, come along the bridgeway and I thought, yeah, he's gonna disappear over the other side. There's a big boggy meadow pasture field there. I thought that's where he'll go because a female. No, where did he go? He comes straight down here, as you've seen by the video, and he was literally just there, where this big boulder is, just there, and he stood here feeding for at least half an hour. Half an hour. And it got darker and darker, and we sat there and we watched him, and he knew we were watching him from the truck just behind us. And uh, eventually he had to get out because he needed to get towards the tent and actually couldn't stay in the truck all night and we kind of shooed him off and then we got into the tent and um i suppose we had what about an hour <laughs> probably less than an hour in the tent where we started to hear him again and he'd obviously made himself back up the track up there and he came back down and he was around the tent and he was literally right round the tent right round the tent feed him because he's just coming in towards the rut season now these young male stags they constantly need to feed when they go into the rut they barely get any rest whatsoever so he was just here munching and munching and munching and munching away and then it got to the point where i needed to get up and have a pee 
because you can only out of it for so long at a certain age. And I got out and he was literally at the back of the truck and I needed to have a pee. So again, we just kind of like kept a distance, shooed him off and then he went over the other side. And then again, early hours this morning, he came back. He had a bit of a munch and a feed, but otherwise we slept reasonably okay, despite the, the ominous threat of a, a male deer in rut being around us. But what a view to wake up to. Look at that. Down on the lot this morning, a bit cloudier. We've already had a cup of tea over the... Do you know what? It's the beauty of having a truck is that, you know what? You can pitch up somewhere not too far off the beaten track, get the tent put up just there. And then you got the truck and you can just make a brew on the back of the truck, which is what I've just done, using the table as a windbreak. I've had a brew, we're gonna clap stuff down, get something to eat. Catch you again a little bit later. Bye! Dear, 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 dear.